What's going on, Yu-Gi-Oh! fans? Platinum Cards in the house, and today I'm going to be coming to you with my true Draco deck profile. Now, you might be wondering, where the hell is the sleeves? Well, that's an interesting story. The sleeves are golden, and I think they look better on my Eldritch deck, so I went ahead and flipped them there. So I'm waiting for replacement sleeves, and then I will be adding sleeves to these. But, uh, of course, if you like what you see, don't hesitate to like, comment, and subscribe, and let's go ahead and get into this deck. So, first of all, we're going to be running three copies of Dynamite Knight the true Draco fighter. Now this card was just taken 100% off the ban list and this card is excellent for this deck. Its effect is to tribute summon this card face up. You contribute a continuous spell or trap you control, which is great for the deck or the archetype overall, instead of a monster. Once per turn during either player's turn, when your opponent activates a card or effect uh, while you control this tribute summoned monster, you can take one true Draco or true king continuous trap from your deck either activate it or add it to your hand so great searcher great ability and ability to summon itself using uh continuous spells and traps i think is super dope uh, really unique in my opinion and honestly it makes the deck that much better uh next i like to play three copies of ignis heat uh the true draco warrior uh, this, I, I feel like this is pretty standard, three of that and three of this. Um, to tribute summon this card face up, you can tribute a continuous spell or trap you control instead of a monster. Once per turn, when your opponent activates a card or effect, the way you control this tribute summon monster, quick effect, you can take one true Draco or true King continuous spell or trap from your deck, either activate it or add it to your hand. So, great card. Uh, its ability to tribute itself is, I would say, standard for the archetype, or sorry, to tribute, um, a spell or trap standard for the archetype, but really, really nice. Uh, next, I like to play double copies of Majesty Maiden, the true Draco caster. Uh, to tribute this card, you can uh, tribute a face-up spell or trap you control instead, instead of a monster. Once per turn, when your opponent activates a card effect while you control the tribute summon monster, you can add one true Draco or true king monster from your deck to your hand. Now, I know a lot of people run different ratios of this, so I would say to each his own. I've seen people run three. I've seen people run one, honestly, but I definitely would say that you have to run this on the deck. I like two just because it's a nice searcher and all that, and I like to have, like, an additional monster to be able to, you know, summon on the field, so uh, this deck doesn't uh, have too many monsters on it. In fact, this is the last monster, so I would definitely recommend running at least two just because, so you can have an additional monster. However, they're pretty searchable, I'd say, or, and there's good draw power in the deck, so um, it's up to you. Uh, next for these spell cards, uh, I'd like to play three copies of the continuous spell card, Disciples of the True Draco Phoenix. So its effect is you can target three true Draco and or three true king cards in your graveyard, shuffle them into the deck, and then draw one card. So pretty good. Recyclability plus draw power. Uh, during your main phase, you can immediately after this effect resolves, tribute summon one true Draco or true king monster face up. Uh, if this card is sent from the, the spell and traps onto the graveyard, you can target one spell slash trap on the field, destroy it. So, pretty good. The ability to destroy spells and traps is really, really good against... A lot of people run Mystic Mind. Hell, I'm running it in this deck. Um, a lot of people like... Um, Runics. Runix has been a thorn in my side since it came out at locals. So definitely really like this card. I would definitely recommend running it at 3 because spell and trap removal is really, really important right now. Uh, next... Uh, I like to play triple copies of True Draco Heritage. All right. So during your main phase, you can draw cards equal to the number of True Draco and True King uh, types, monster spell and traps uh, sent from the field to the graveyard this turn. During your main phase, you can immediately after this effect resolves, tribute summon one True Draco or True King monster face up. Uh, if this card is sent... Uh, from the spell and trap zone to the graveyard, you can uh, target one spell or trap card on the field, destroy it. You can only use each effect once per turn. So, pretty good uh, search power. Um, draw power, sorry, not search power. but um, And the ability to destroy. I really like this card as well. Uh, next, uh, one of... I like to play one copy of Dragonic Diagram. Pretty sure this is limited right now, so... Yeah, you can only run it at one. Uh, all true Draco and true King monsters on the field gain 300 attack and defense. I feel that effect is a little bit underrated because your highest attack point monster is uh, is this thing right here with 2,500 attack. And once you get into that skill drain lock, um, you kind of want to be able to have the monster with the highest attack on the field because you can't take advantage of effects like that, right? So um, I think that's a little bit underrated. It does give your uh, monster a little bit uh, of strength, I'd say. Um uh where where am i uh the first time each tribute summited trade true Draco, true king monster will be destroyed by battle each turn it is not destroyed that's pretty good protection as well uh once per turn you can destroy one other card you control or in your hand and if you do add one true draco or true king card from your deck to your hand and this 
Great Searcher Plus has the ability to pop off additional spell and trap effects from your hand, so I would definitely recommend that you play this card. I wish I could play it at more than one, but for now, looks like we got it at one. Um, and then additionally, what I mentioned earlier, Mystic Mine, you cannot escape this card in the current format. Pretty much everybody plays it. You are going to have to play it, especially in this deck, because... Um, a lot of times you're only going to have like one monster on the field, right? So you want to even the odds as much as possible. So I would definitely recommend picking a Mystic Mine. It used to be a degenerate strategy when I played it uh, back in the day, but uh, it seems like everybody's a degenerate now, right? So uh, and when everyone does, when everybody has become a degenerate, nobody's a degenerate, right? Everyone's playing it. That's just what it is. So um, and then the one terraforming, just to be able to search both my field spells. Uh, and then for some additional draw power, I like Pot of Duality. Um, you could honestly use Prosperity or Extravagance if you please, but I'm not running an extra deck, so that's why I decided to go for Duality. If you do run an extra deck, you could go for either of the aforementioned two. Plus, I don't really get a chance to run Duality that much, so I really wanted to try it out. Um, excavate the top three, uh, of your deck, add one of them to your hand. Also, after that, shuffle the rest, uh, back into your deck. You can only activate one per turn. You cannot Special Summon the turn you activate this card. We're not going to be Special Summoning most of the time. We're going to be Tribute, tribute Summoning. Like, by most of the time, like, you're never going to be Special Summoning, so most of the time you're going to be tribute summoning yeah so and then next uh i like this as kind of a tech choice uh the monarch stormforth i think this is a super fun card to play around with once uh during this turn if you would tribute summon a uh, tribute a monster for tribute summon you contribute one monster your opponent controls even though you do not control it you can only activate uh this card once per turn uh during the turn you activate this card uh you cannot special summon monsters from the uh extra deck you don't have an extra deck so it doesn't really concern you right um really like this card because if you read it through uh, you're not technically targeting or affecting any of your opponent's monsters in any way shape or form hell you're not even affecting your own monsters all you're doing is giving yourself the ability to tribute your opponent's monster in order to summon and i think it's a pretty decent way to get rid of some of the more annoying cards that your opponent may have so i really really do like this card um uh you could switch it out for a bunch of things there's so many like continuous spells and traps that if you don't feel like running this you can maybe run them instead uh, a lot of floodgates this uh this format so if you're into floodgates i i am running floodgates in this deck obviously but um if you're into something that i don't run or that i'll show you and you feel like hey maybe you should run this maybe that would be something that you could switch up for that uh moving forward to the trap cards so i like to play three copies of true draco apocalypse apocalypse yeah it's apocalypse so sometimes i mess up my pronunciations uh this card is set from the spell and trap zone to the graveyard you can target one monster on the field destroy it so monster destruction pretty decent as well uh helps you get rid of some of the pesky monsters it does target though so you got to be a little bit careful um you cannot activate the f uh you cannot activate the following effects of the uh of uh true draco apocalypse in the same chain uh so the first bullet point says you can target one other true draco or true king monster you control destroy it and if you do the attack and defense of all face up uh monsters your opponent controls become half their current attack and defense even if this card leaves the field great way to reduce uh just your opponents uh like i said earlier uh 2500 is your highest attack point so this card does really really come in handy that effect does really help um plus you're tributing it up so nice uh secondly during your opponent's main phase you can immediately after this effect resolves tribute summon one true draco or true king monster face up you can only use each effect uh once per turn so really like this card uh, i would say it's pretty pretty solid and also i've seen a couple other decks pretty much every deck i've seen at least at locals they're running three of these as well so yeah i feel like it's is universal at three uh Next, I like to play two copies of True King's Return. So if this card is sent from the Spell and Trap Zone to the Graveyard, you can target a monster on the field, destroy it, and then you cannot activate the following effects uh, in the same chain. You can target one True Draco or True King monster in your graveyard, special summoner in defense position. So this is your, that's why I said like 90% of your time, or 99% of your time is going to be normal summoning, or tribute summoning, uh, or normal summoning. No, no, tribute summoning, I'm tripping. Um, but uh, this card can have that happen so that's why i wanted to uh i really like this card because it does help you recycle so um and then secondly during your opponent's main phase you can immediately after this effect resolves tribute summon one true draco or true king monster face up blah 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 it's the same one same effect as the other one so i think they're both very very useful cards in their own right um i only use two of these uh just because i never got a chance to test it at three uh i only happen to own two so if you guys feel like that hey three might be the way to go i can completely understand um i guess to each his own right so i will be testing three the second i get a third one but for now we're running it at two uh and then are the floodgates so i like to be as annoying as possible when i run into people so 
three copies of Skill Drain, of course. Uh, three copies of Summon Limit. And three copies of Rivalry of the Warlords. And two copies of There Can Only Be One. Now, uh, if you feel like maybe, hey, some other Floodgate or uh, Continuous Spell or Trap would work in this situation, I feel like these are maybe the ones that you can switch out. Most likely, there can only be one. The other ones, I really, really like, though. The other ones, I really like. This one, I feel like uh, maybe you could switch out if you feel like something else would be a little bit better. Um, the combinations of this and this have shut, have had me beat so many decks. Um, I beat a Tier Element deck at Locals. Um, I, I'm, I'm forgetting. What was the other... Oh, Goaty. I shut down a Goaty deck. Um, I know Goaty's not the most meta-relevant card, but still, I, this and this have insane potential together, right? Combined. Um, plus, if you happen to throw in a rivalry in there, your opponent's screwed, right? So, uh, definitely would say that, uh, overall, this is a very, very solid deck. Um, it's very, very competitive. Um, not, okay, let me rephrase that. It is, it is competitive, but you're not, like, you know what I mean? Like, you're not going to, like, nationals and winning 100% of all games, you know what I mean? But I would say it's competitive, not, uh, I don't want to be misquoted in saying, like, you know, you're going to win every single deck or every single duel at all times. But uh, overall, uh, definitely fun. Also, I forgot to mention this, but if Skill Drain becomes um, a little too pricey, uh, like I had to pay 10 bucks for a freaking damaged copy, I was pissed about that. Um, activate this card. You can use this card instead. Uh, the Monarchs Erupt. Activate this card uh, only if you have no cards in your extra deck, which in this case it works for us. And uh, control a tribute summon monster. Negate the effects of all face up monsters on the field. While those monsters are face up on the field, accept uh, tribute summon monsters. During the end phase, if you control and tribute summon monsters, send this card to the graveyard. So uh, I would say this is definitely like a weaker version of skill drain, but it is definitely a budget version of skill drain. So um, if you are on a budget, definitely would recommend picking that up. But overall, this deck is, I would say, relatively cheap. This is definitely one that's really, really fun to mess around with. Definitely uh one that's if you like you like me you like making people mad this is this is the way to go but anyways guys this is plotter mccards signing out for the day if you have any suggestions for any cards that you'd like to see added to this deck or if you feel like hey maybe you should be running this or maybe you shouldn't be running this i'd love to hear about that in the comments below but this is plotter mccards signing out for the day if you like what you see don't hesitate to like comment and subscribe and we will see you in the next video